Hey, how's it going everyone? Craig here from Sound Iron, and in today's walkthrough we're going to be checking out the newest addition to our Hyperion Orchestral series. We're going to be checking out Hyperion Strings Octobase. This library captures the sound of the deepest concert string instrument with an extending range that goes all the way down to 16 hertz. This bone rattling beast was sampled in comprehensive detail and comes with a wide selection of 30 plus articulations weighing in at just over 12 gigabytes of total content. For Hyperion Strings Octobase, we worked with Giorgio Riolo and Daniele Bertinelli to capture Moneta's Octobase at its permanent home in his private gallery in Milan, Italy. So now we got Hyperion Strings Octobase loaded up and you'll see that the UI looks very similar to our other Hyperion based products, but it's definitely been revamped and has a really slick look to it. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the user interface and give you a little bit of an overview. So if you're not familiar, at the very top, you'll see that you have these sound shaping controls. You got body, which adds a little bit more bass if you want a little bit more of that, although this instrument does go super low. So, you know, if you want to add a little bit more, you can. You also have some attack and offset if you want to soften the attack or play around with the offset. The swell knob controls the modulation. So if we're playing uh, this true legato that we have loaded up. You can get a little bit more dynamics as far as the volume and sort of the expression of the instrument. And then you have release, release volume and vibrato. So if you want to add a little bit of uh, pseudo vibrato, you can do that. These samples were recorded without vibrato, but if you want to add a little bit, you can. And then below these controls, you have the articulation slot system. And what's fantastic about this is that you have the ability to change the way this layout is. Even though it comes preloaded with articulations ready to use, you can click the drop down on any of these slots and swap out any of these different articulations. So you can see all the articulations that it comes with in this master NKI. So now that we have the true legato loaded up, I want to play for you the lowest note of this instrument because it's crazy how extended the range is. You know, being able to add basses an octave below cellos, now you can have the octobase going below the basses, which is really wild. So I'm going to go ahead and play for you this lowest note just so you can see how far this thing goes. So you can see it goes really low and if you have a sub you'll really be able to hear that low sub energy that comes from this instrument. If you've ever seen an octobase you'll see how big they are. You actually have to stand on a little step stool and you can't fret the instrument so you have to use these little levers that you can pull down to change the different notes and it clamps on the fretboard. And this thing just sounds humongous and it is humongous and that's why it sounds so beefy. So now I want to go ahead and talk to you a little bit about these controls down here. So when you have True Legato loaded up, you have these auto responses right here. So you can turn this off or turn this on. And this just allows you to be able to play a little bit faster if you want. So it's a little bit more uh, adaptable. Or if you play slow, you'll see that down in the response slider stays low. But then if you play fast, So it makes it a little bit more adaptable depending on how you play and the way that you're gonna be performing in your lines. Although with this instrument, they don't necessarily play it very fast. So, you know, normally if you were using this in more of a traditional orchestral sense, you would probably play it a little bit more slower to really support those low bass melody lines. And if you wanna play it faster or use it for a different context, you can do that too. So let's go ahead and check out some of the other articulations with Hyperion Strings Octobase. We got these tremolo F layer. And then we got these swell sustains, which I really like. And I really like using this with the pseudo legato turned on, so you can have these evolving swelling lines, but being able to legato between them, so you have these really expressive uh, legato lines. And then we 
have these Forzando sustains. And then we also have some Flatando sustains. For this, I'm going to turn the legato off. And also with this instrument, we extended the range. So normally it has these two lower octaves, but we extended it another octave up. So it adds a nice little different timbre to the instrument and could be really nice, especially for layering with other orchestral instruments like cellos or basses. So if we play these up here, it has a really nice warm sound to it. And then we have some staccatos. And some spiccatos. as well as some pizzicatos. So now I want to play for you some of the harmonic sustains that come with the library. And these are great for horror. There's also some percussion sounds included. And with the instrument being as big as it is, it makes sense to capture some percussion because it almost can act like a big drum depending on where you hit it. So you get these really low hits, some different types of percussive timbres some more clacks. Big bassy hits. So it's really cool to be able to use these types of percussive sounds and blend them with other drums so you can get some really unique combinations. And then we also have some percussive thumps. Then we also have some rolls and scrapes. So the next thing I want to show you is the space tab and what's really cool about this is you have the option to place the instrument anywhere on the soundstage as well as being able to add some reverb as well. So if we turn this off, you got a pretty dry sound, a little roomy, but if you want to add a little bit more you can add the far mics as well. And then 
if you go back to the space tab, turn the reverb on, you have your choice of algorithmic or convolution. And then you can control whether you want it to be a room or a hall. So it really gives it that big lush hall sound. And then if we head on over to the effects tab, you'll see that you have some other controls. You have some filtering as well as some compression and you can do some equalization as well. So if you want to shape the sound of the instrument within the library, you can do that without having to reach for any external plugins or you can use your own if you want. If you want to do that, you can just turn these off. So if you want to add some filter. So if you want to start getting a little bit into sound design territory. Or you can play around with some compression or you can equalize the instrument. There's also some presets for you to choose as well. So if you go up here and select from any of these different presets, let's go ahead and just check one of these out, just a random one. Got this one called Telephone. And then we also have the Play Assist tab, and this is great for if you're not too familiar with music theory and you just want to let the Play Assist do the work, you can turn this on. You can select from any of these different scales. So if you click this drop down, you got Major, Minor, Major Six, minor seven, sus four, whole tone, harmonic minor. So if you want harmonic minor and you want to do, let's say C harmonic minor, if you play anywhere on the white keys, or if you want to do D harmonic minor, And then we also have an arpeggio tab, and this is great for if you want to add some arpeggiation to some of these. So let's turn this on and see what we got. And then here you can adjust the amount of steps. So if you want to increase it or decrease it, you can do that. If you want to play around with the different velocities on the graph or just turn the table off, you can do that too. Then you can also change the rhythm. Then you also have this mode right here for trill, arpeggio, or run. And then you could also humanize, add some swing if you want to change the direction. So if you want it to zigzag. Or just do a chord. And then real quick, going back to the mic mixer, you have the close and far if you want to turn these off and save a little bit of RAM, you can do that. So if you want just the far or the close and far or just the close and you want to blend that with something else, you can do that too. You can also control the blend of how much you want in each microphone. So if you want a little bit more of that far mic, and then also if you want to route these in your DAW, you can click right here in the output, and then you can have these go to different channels for different types of mixing. So a few different options for you to shape and control the sound. 
So the next thing that I want to show you is the phrases NKI. So they recorded some phrases for this library, a few different variations from major and minor, high and low. And these are great, especially if you're just wanting to have some real octobase phrases that you want to use in your tracks, especially if you're doing any kind of horror stuff, because since it's really low, you can really get some kind of eerie sort of movement, especially in that lower range. So let's go ahead and play for you some of these. These are the A major high. And then you can also use the swell knob if you want to play a little bit more with the volume. Now let's have a listen to the B flat minor high phrases. Now let's head over to the mic mixer. I want to add that far mic, so let's hear how it sounds with that far mic in there. You can hear it really adds that room in there. It was recorded in a big space, so it really helps add that depth to the sound of the instrument. And then if you want to crossfade between some of these different phrases, you can turn on this X fade right here. So now you can kind of create your own little lines. Let's have a listen to this D major low. And you can hear some of those notes are so low, it almost sounds like a muscle car. It's crazy that uh, this instrument can go that low and still sound musical. So these are all the phrases playing back normal. If you want to change the way that these play back, you can go right here to the playback. So you can do sync. So if you want these to sync to your DAW. And then you can also do variables. So if you want to kind of massage it in your track a specific way, if let's say you just want to kind of have it fit a certain little part and you want to be able to control it on your own, you can use variable. So you can hear it with it cranked, it's playing it a lot faster. really play it slower. You can also play around with the pitch of the instrument as well. I mean, this instrument already goes down super low, but if you want to pitch it down a little bit more, you can. And then if you head back over here to the space, you can crank up the time. Let's check out the convolution. And so we got cathedral. We also have some different effects as well. So we got some effects long. Now let's see how it sounds with one of these. Let's check out this one right here that says mallet.
we have some effects shorts. So let's have a listen to one of these. Let's check out this AUG. So as you can hear with some of the different effects and pulses that we've included, you can really take this instrument into sound design territory and it's perfect for doing any kind of horror scoring or just anything where you want that really dark and low and mysterious rumbling sound, especially if you've never used any kind of instruments like this in your track and you want to just add something new and something fresh, this is definitely the way to go. Or you can just straight up layer this up with orchestral instruments and instead of using a sub sign or anything like that, you can use this instrument because it goes down to 16 hertz. So you can really add that low sub with also having that timbre of the orchestral line, you know, from having that cello and bass and then being able to go to the octa bass, you really have that low sub combination, but still having that timbre and playability of strings. So the next thing I want to show you is the sequencer for the phrases. And what's really cool about this is you can lay out the different phrases however you want. So right down here, if you click these different steps, you can also assign your own phrases. So if you want to assign that, you just click this right here on the bottom right, pick the phrase you want, and then you'll have that phrase right there. So then if you go back over here and click on that first step, and then you can use this pink key to cycle through the different phrases. And then with these different phrases, you can also play around with which section of the phrase you want to use. So if we go to this first step, let's say you just want to use this last bit. And then for this next one, you just want to use up until here. And then this next phrase, you just want to use maybe just this middle section. Go back to this one and then let's play that pink key. So you can really craft and shape the way that the performance is, so you can really fit it to your track the way that you want. So that about wraps up this walkthrough for Hyperion Strings Octobase. If you'd like to learn more about this library or any of the other products within our Hyperion Orchestral series, make sure to go to soundiron.com or click the link in the description below. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, stay up to date on future videos like these, and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.